A piece of me died when I first found out. How could something I invested so much in have an issue this serious? I don't know. Maybe it was nothing. One thing was for sure. I had to find out for myself. But it didn't matter how much digging I did, I was always left with the same two questions. Why hasn't Nikon said anything? And why haven't I seen it? One thing was clear. I needed to go somewhere else. Somewhere darker. After what I'd seen online, I wasn't sure if I was ready to face the shadows. But I had to know. I had to see it for myself. anymore. The rumors were everywhere, but the evidence wasn't. Maybe this is all just blown out of proportion. Or maybe I'm just not good enough to crack the case. I didn't even check my zebras, dude. You know what? It looks good on the monitor. We're going to run with it. I hope you guys enjoyed that short little cinematic thing that I put together. Um, really, I just wanted to show you guys that you could shoot in extremely low light conditions and not have any issues whatsoever with flickering shadows with the Z6 III. I just want to clarify, they do exist. There are flickering shadows. At the beginning, I was hoping it was just like a per unit thing, but it turns out they exist. They're on mine as well. Here's what I kind of surmised. I haven't seen them until I really tried to see them. If you use extremely high ISO, in NRAW, you're gonna have flickering shadows. And there's nothing you can really do about it right now. Hopefully Nikon releases a firmware update. But don't let that tarnish your opinion of this camera because it really is pretty awesome. I've never been able to shoot with a camera in RAW before, so that capability alone is like super cool. And like I said, I really, like through daily use of this camera, I really have not seen any flickering shadows in any of my professional projects. I don't shoot in RAW a whole lot. I don't have that kind of storage most of the time. But when I do more cinematic looking images, like I showed you at the start of this, I, I try to use NRAW. So let's just, let's take a look at this talking head that I underexposed like crazy. So it's at 6,400 ISO. And like, I just dropped my lights down super low, heavy on the ND, and it's super underexposed. And really you still can't tell that there are flickering shadows unless you boost it up really high. If you're in a situation where you have to bring back an image this underexposed, then you got to go back to the drawing board. You got to do some digging. You got to do some learning because it's just, you shouldn't have an image that's that underexposed in many lighting scenarios. If I'm using NRAW, which is where we see the flickering shadows, typically I'm going to be in a more professional setting. I'm not going to be running around town late at night with available light. If I'm using NRAW, I want the picture to look as good as possible. So I'm going to be using lighting and I'm going to be making sure I get my exposure correct. And another thing is you don't need to use high ISO in dark shots. In fact, it's better to use a lower ISO and add a little bit more light because that's going to keep your shadows as clean as possible. So every shot that I shot in this cinematic is at 800 ISO. My lights were not super bright. You don't need like an aperture 1200 to shoot in 800 ISO for for these videos. I used a couple of the Aperture T2Cs and I used a GVM P80S and I used a, a Nanlite FS300 and it was at like 20% maybe. Honestly, the goal for this whole thing was to have really, really dark scenes so I didn't use a whole lot of light. I mean, I'm extremely pleased how the images came out and, and like I said before, if you're going to be using NRAW, you're going to want lighting equipment. You're going to want something there. And 6400 ISO, 
uh, as the second native, like that's going to give you more than enough range to be able to grab what you need as long as you have like a decently fast lens. The only time I'm using extreme low light where I need the extreme low light capabilities where I'm like pumping up shadows like crazy is in live event stuff when I can't control the lighting at all. Uh, and I'm not going to record terabytes of footage for one like band show. That's just not going to happen. I'm going to record it in the H.265 10 bit and call it a day. I'll let everybody make up their own mind on the flickering shadow thing. But honestly, to me, it's not a big deal at all. It doesn't affect my footage like whatsoever. As long as I expose correctly, then there's not going to be any issues. So anyway, that's just my two cents. Here's some more of that talking head that was underexposed. I changed the exposure around a little bit. This is all shot at 6400 ISO. And I mean, really, really dim key light and really, really, really dim lights in the room. I personally think the whole flickering shadow thing has gotten blown out of proportion. Yes, it should be fixed. Don't get me wrong, it should be fixed, and it's unacceptable to release a camera with that kind of issue, but it doesn't affect any of my footage, so I don't, like, I don't really care. Even if there's a firmware update, like, it's not going to change my footage that much, I don't think. I don't think. Yeah, let me let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you think the if you think the flickering shadow thing is going to ruin your footage, I mean, sorry, dude. If you think the flickering shadows are going to affect your footage, then don't get the Z63. Go grab a Black Magic 6K or like uh, Sony, and you'll be fine. You don't have to buy this camera, but it's really freaking nice, and I like it a lot. I'm a Sony guy, bro. I'm a Sony guy, and I love this thing. I started seeing these videos of the flickering shadows and I was like, bruh, no way, no way did I just spend that much money on a camera that's going to like flicker in every single dark spot of my, my videos. And that's not even, it's not even close to being the case. I honestly don't think I would have even noticed unless I saw videos about it on the internet. Like seriously, people are blown it way out of proportion. I get that it's not a good thing and it should be fixed. I, like I said earlier, like, but if you expose your images even remotely correctly, you're not going to have any issues. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the whole flickering shadows thing. Let me know what you think about the Z6 III. So I used my A7S III and I shot some side by side. So I'm going to be making a video comparing uh, the Z6 III and the A7S III. So stay tuned for that. Uh, leave a subscription and a like and I will catch you guys in the next one. Yeah? Goodbye.